Good morning, class! It's our second lesson for today. Eh, wag niyo akong tawagin teacher. Kinikilig ako. Hindi ako teacher. Though it's my dream to become culinary professor someday, hindi pa po ako licensed to teach. That's why I am just imparting my knowledge. Yung mga natutunan ko ay importante rin na malaman ninyo dahil ito yung mga nakatulong talaga sa akin. So, ang julienne is just like maliliit lang na matchsticks. Kailangan ito yung naghaharap sa kuchito. I would advise that you get this as part of your starter kit. You just have to take care of them properly. You tell them, I love you. We will be talking about different cuts of vegetables, how to store your leafy green vegetables, basic pots and pans. Iisa-isahin natin yan, pero sisimula muna natin sa ating vegetable cutting. One of the slices or cuts na normally ginagamit natin sa bahay is diced, hindi ba? When you cut your green bell pepper, you just have to cut through the sides. Normally, yun ang ginagawa sa mga may bahay, di ba? Pero ang gagawin natin ngayon is to cut the top and the bottom part. In addition to yun. And then, we take out yung seeds sa loob. Cut on the side. Slice through the middle. Pero hanggang gitna lang. Hindi nyo siya ka-cut through and through. And then, you just take out the seeds like that. I always advise you guys, mga classmates, to have a trash bowl beside you. Para lahat ng biodegradable dyan yung nailalagay. And another trash bowl for, let's say, paper or plastics. So, our first slice would be julienne. So, ang julienne is just like maliliit lang na matchsticks, like that. So, that's your julienne. For the fine julienne, iyon yung mas maninipis. Mas maninipis. So, you see the difference? Si julienne... Medyo mas chubby siya ng very, very light. You find Julian yung nag intermittent fasting. So, pwede natin itong tawaging Ryan at Juday. <laughs> Kasi si Ryan, ang galing mag-intermittent fasting. Ako hindi ko talaga kaya. So, ang namimitin ko, Julian body. <laughs> we also have our paisan or tile. Ginagamit natin itong cut na to sa, let's say, caldereta o mechado, mga stews. So you just make a tile. That's your paisan. Now, we have our brunois. Ang brunois is basically a fine dice. Kadalasan, ginagamit ito sa mga lumpiang Shanghai. And then, we will just dice it. Sinasabi ko lang sa inyo yung mga terms, ano? Pero, kung saan kayo komportable, kung ano yung mas nakasanayan yung gamitin terms sa mga bahay ninyo, okay lang naman. Pero at least, when you eat sa mga restaurants, alam nyo na ang mga slices ng mga vegetables na makikita ninyo. Meron pang isang slice, yung tinatawag na diagonal paisan. Parang, yan lang siya. So, yung ganitong slices, you can also use this sa mga stews ninyo. Pinaarte nyo lang. So, gawin nyo ngayong Pasko. Para mas mukhang um-effort kayo ngayong Pasko. Hindi ba lahat tayo e-effort ngayong Pasko, ngayong Noche Buena? Because we all want our Christmas to be special. Kahit sobrang challenging yung 2020 at kahit gustong gusto natin siya matapos, we still have so much to be thankful for. We still have to be grateful for life and for our families. Basically, when cutting your carrots, it's important that you cut them first like that. If you want your carrots to be a fine julienne, you just slice it ng maninipis. Pero kung gusto nyo ng mahaba, yung pang lumpia or pang salads, you can cut it like this. Ito kasi minsan ang ginagamit ng mga vegans as part of their noodles. So when slicing, it's important that you claw your hand para kasi ito, parang ito siya oh. <laughs> ito, ito siya, ito, ito. Kailangan ito yung parang mismong naghaharang sa kutsilyo. So basically, you are protecting your fingers from being sliced or being chopped. Huwag ka dyan... Okay. Yung thumb ninyo, dapat nakaganyan siya. Yung thumb ninyo will be the one pushing the ingredient forward. So it's like this. Forward. So mas madali yung pag 
atras ng inyong kamay. So, you have now your fine julienne. There you go. Sa ating cucumber, you just have to take out the tops again. Yung iba, sa restaurants, gumagamit sila ng peeler na manipis to peel off parts of it para makagawa sila ng texture lang. Wala namang effect yun sa pagluluto. So, we have our rondel. This is what you call rondel. Half inch thick cut. Yan si rondel. So, ito yung mga pwede sa mga salads. Kung mas manipis pa, ang gagawin niya naman ay mas manipis na rondel. Ito yung pang mga pickles, sandwiches, burgers, yan siya manipis. Ang scallop is yung mas makapal lang na hiwa from the rondel. Mas makapal lang siya, parang ganyan. This is your scallop. Malapad. Para siyang, para siyang scallop, di ba? Kaya siya tinawag na scallop. Now, we can move to our batons. Basically, ang batons is... Ito ang baton, ito ang batonets. It is the French fry cut or wedges na tinatawag. Though the wedges is much more bigger. So there, we have, you have your different types of slices of vegetables, different cuts and techniques. Okay, I'll just set this aside and we move to our next chapter. How do you store your leafy vegetables? One trick that I learned from Chef Jean nung nag-refresher course ako. Pag halimbawa ang repolyo nyo ay may parang bruise na yung leafy outer layer niya. You just take this out. And then, when you store it, this manila paper will help trap in moisture. Ang imo-moist nyo is the paper itself, not the vegetables. Yung iba ang ginagamit jaryo, okay lang naman. Ang ako lang, parang feeling ko, pag jaryo ang ginamit ko, yung ink na pinamprint doon sa jaryo, mapupunta na doon sa gulay. You can use it naman. Just make sure that you wash your veggies before you use it after storing them properly. So, of course, keeping them in your refrigerator is really the best way to do it. Yun naman ang gagawin natin. Ito lang yung proseso. Gusto kong malaman ninyo kung isustore nyo na siya. So, you have your cabbage. Ididry ko siya. Huwag nyong tatanggalin yung tangkay niya, itong, itong puno niya. Kasi ito yung magre-retain ng moisture niya. Ito yung mag-cycle ng moisture sa loob ng repolyo. So, babasain ko ngayon ito. Hindi kailangan soaking wet. Ganyan-ganyan lang. Pak, 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 pak. Ganyan lang. And then, you just wrap your cabbage ng damp manila paper. Your first part, and then your second one is a dry manila paper. And then, you can put this in a Ziploc bag or a recyclable plastic bag. And then, you can store it sa chiller. This could last for at least two weeks. Halimbawa, konti lang naman yung gagamitin nyo sa repolyo. Then, yung layer lang na yun yung tanggalin nyo. Then, you just store it again. Ganon din sa pag-store ng herbs. Ang gaya itong parsley, wala na siyang ugat. Ganyan na siya, di ba? Store nyo na siya buong ganyan. Make sure that the leaves are dry para hindi siya mangitim. Make sure lang na you gently wrap it, leaving an allowance on both sides para hindi siya mag -bruise. You can do this in any types of herbs that you have basil or tarragon, rosemary, ganyan. And then just label it. Yung labas ng plastic para hindi nyo kailangan magkalkal ng matagal. If your herbs ay may ugat, yan, kagaya na itong cilantro namin. Dadagdagan ko lang siya ng tubig. Dadagdagan ko lang siya ng tubig. And then, what I'll do is, itadump lang din ulit natin yung manila paper. Tapos, tatakpan natin yung gilid lang. Make sure that you cover everything. Ganyan lang ka loose. And then you can put a rubber band here and then a plastic cover, then a rubber band again. Tapos, isustore nyo siya ng patayo. This will last for at least a week or a week and a half. Now, paano nyo bubuhayin ang mga gulay na 50-50 na? Yung talagang lantang-lanta na siya, parang ganito in a water ice bath, isoak nyo doon yung mga gulay ninyo na lanta na. Soak it for at least an hour or two. Kung gusto nyo mabuhay siya kaagad, pigaan nyo lang ng kalamansi. Yung acid kasi ang magpapabuhay 
sa namatay na parts ng vegetables. Pag nalagay nyo na yung acid na yun, just make sure that you're gonna use it on the same day. Because if not, the acid from the calamansi will break down the fibers of the vegetables and hindi nyo na talaga siya magagamit. At least, meron tayong dalawang method. Method na bubuhayin siya ng buwagang bongga para ma-store nyo pa properly. That's the water ice bath method. And the one with calamansi. Okay! We now move to our pots and pans. I will discuss kung ano yung mga uses nila and at the same time, kung ano ba yung pinakamagandang pan na pag i ninyo, na magagamit ninyo halos araw-araw. Okay, magsimula muna tayo sa cast iron skillet. This is a very good investment. It will last you for a long time and at the same time, meron na siyang sarili niyang coating. Every time na ginagamit nyo siya and sinisison nyo siya, lalo siya nakikreate ng film. Ito yung klase ng grill pan or iron skillet na conducts and retains heat evenly. So, it's perfect for searing steaks or chicken or fish kasi yung distribute ng heat niya, even na even. This is also good for baking. So, from stove top, you can immediately transfer it to your oven. Kaya niyang mag-hold ng high temperature heat. A good size of a cast iron skillet is a 10 or 12 inches. This is around 8 so, mas malaki ng konti dito yung 10. Maganda material or magandang klaseng iron skillet is the one that's made in the States. So, kung may mga kamag-anak kayo sa States, sabihin nyo naman, Tita, beka na men! <laughs> beka na men sa Christmas! From there, we will move to our cast iron grill pan. Okay. Kung wala kayong griller sa bahay and you want to achieve that perfect grill mark, it has ridges already. So, yan yung nagkikreate na grill marks sa mga meats na niluluto ninyo. So, it's really nice for texture. Ang isa pang effect ng ridges na yan is nire-render niya yung fat. It conducts heat very well. It cooks the food evenly. This is a straight-sided saute pan. A straight-sided saute pan is great for shallow frying, tossing pasta, and basically any one-pot dishes. This is your pan that you could use almost every day. It's also important that when you get a straight-sided saute pan is the one that has a lid. There's also one that ang lid nila is glass. I like that kasi nakikita ko yung niluluto ko nang hindi ko kailangan tanggalin ng tanggalin ang takip. Dahil kapag ka nagtanggal kayo ng nagtanggal ang takip, nahihinto yung cooking process niya. Kumbaga, lalong bumabagal. Yung 10 to 14 inch na straight-sided saute pan allows you for greater surface heat. I would advise that you get this as part of your starter kit. Kasi magagamit nyo talaga siya. May mga ganito naman that is also induction safe. Meron na siyang combination na ganun. Pwede sa induction, pwede sa stovetop. So that's a very good investment. Yung pwede sa pareho para hindi iba-iba yung binibili nyo per stovetop. One thing you have to remember when buying a saute pan, meron siya parang screw dyan. It's either you buy the one handle with a screw, it means mas matibay siya, or the one na welded yung handle niya. Now we have our wok. This is one of my favorite na pinaglulutuan. A wonder pot for me. One of the most versatile cooking pans in the world. Kasi pwede mo na itong gamitin pang deep fry. Pwede ka na magsabaw dito. Stir fry dito. Gumawa ka ng mga sotang honbihoon. Mga ganyan. So there are two different types of wok. The Cantonese wok and the Mandarin wok. The Cantonese wok comes with two U-shaped ears. So ito yon. Ito yung Cantonese wok na tinatawag. Best used for serving large quantities of food for a big group. Mabalikan ko lang yung mga nagkomento sa akin na ang dumi-dumi daw ng wok ko. Hindi ko naman dinideny, madumi talaga siya. But simply because, ang tagal na nito sa akin. I got this in Bangkok, Thailand, sa Chato Chak. Pangarap ko talaga magkaroon ng wok na matibay. And true enough, this has been with me for more than 5 years already. And as it ages, it gives you more texture at mas nagsi-season siya on its own. So the more you use it, the more it gets seasoned properly. Meaning, it creates a film already na hindi nagsistick yung mga gulay. We have the concave shape or the slope to distribute the heat here and when you toss it, kahit papunta yung mga ingredients dito, bababalik siya sa ilalim. So, nagsisama-sama sila. So, it's easier for you to manage and manipulate your vegetables or any other ingredients na niluluto ninyo. Actually, sa pagka-cute nga niya, pwede na kayong mag-serve dito na mismo. Hindi nyo na kailangan tanggalin. This Walks are more difficult to use for flipping food. Kailangan ang pag-flip ng wrist ninyo is paganon, Pasalo. Over time, nangangalay na kayo. Pero ngayon palang ngalay na ako. So, hihintoan ko na to. Hindi na makatanuhan yung pagpapaanday na ginagawa ako. May injure ako. 
Okay, the Mandarin Walk na makikita ninyo sa mga street food vendors in Hong Kong or in Bangkok or in China na medyo mas magaang tapos wood yung handle niya yung mahabang ganun. That's for tossing, that's for quick cooking kasi manipis lang yung steel na gamit niya. Kaya mabilis din dapat ang kilos at galaw mo. Ngayon kung medyo mabagal ka ay hindi yun ang panluto para sa'yo. Kaya wala ako nun eh. Kasi mabagal lang magluto. So, kung may pupunta sa inyo sa Bangkok o may taga Bangkok, Bekena men. <laughs> Lahat na lang Bekena men. We now go to our Dutch oven. This Dutch oven is a very, very, very good investment. Like the iron skillet, this can last you a lifetime. And this can do a lot of things for you. You can bake, you can stir fry, you can stew. This pot has a thick bottom and sides with a snug, tight-fitting lid that traps in moisture and flavor. Bakit siya naging snug? Because yung weight niya is kasing bigat din siya ng mismong pot. So when the moisture is trapped inside, the flavor of your ingredients will intensify. And at the same time, lahat ng moist bumabalik lang dun sa pagkain. So kaya siya lumalambot. So this is perfect for braising. So let's say you're gonna sear your meats first, ibabrown nyo muna siya dito, and then your final cooking process niya sa oven na. And then you will achieve a very tender, juicy type of food or dish. You need also a saucepan. Itong saucepan na ito, as you can see, it has tall, straight sides that prevent rapid moisture loss. It's good for making sauces, making small batches of soup, blanching, for steaming. This is a 3 liter saucepan. Just remember that the walls should be as thick as the bottom. So when you buy your saucepan, it's important that you talk to a person na alam niya kung ano yung sinasabi niya. Make sure to buy the one that has a lid. Because when making a sauce, when you're boiling something, it's important na may lid siya. And ang maganda dito is, it comes with a glass lid. So you, you can see what's happening inside. So we have here our roasting pan. Okay, this one, it's totally optional. Ako lang, I love roasting chicken or pork or turkey. Itong patungan na to, basically, keeps your protein moist at hindi siya nagkakaroon ng burnt edges because hindi siya nakalapat sa mismo pan niya. Then, dito niya ilalagay sa pan yung vegetables and everything and then the fat from your protein will all go to your vegetables. And then at the same time, this pan, you can use this pan in sauteing, let's say, the sauce na magagawa ninyo out of the veggies and out of the drippings from your protein na ni-roast ninyo. Yung pagka-finish ng luto ng inyong protein ay pantay, pati yung pagkakabraw niya ay pantay because nagsa-circulate yung hangin mula ibabaw hanggang ilalim. Kung may oven kayo and you love to roast and you like to experiment already with different types of dishes, it, this is a nice investment also. Pero hindi naman siya kailangan kung hindi nyo na magagamitin. This is our last item to discuss. This is your stock pot. Magagamit nyo ito kung mahilig kayong maggumawa ng mga sabaw. You can also brine a small turkey here or brine your two whole chickens here. You can use this in large quantities of soups. Yung pagluluto ng soup ninyo, mas magiging siyang flavorful. And it's, it's important that when you're using a stock pot, look for the one that's medyo makapal at mabigat yung sides niya or yung material niya. Kasi nga, dahil matagal yung kulong gagawin natin, when you use your stock pot, kailangan matibay talaga siya. How about po yung glass cooking ware? What can you say about it in terms of quality? Okay, glass cooking ware, I also have that. Okay. Okay din naman siya. Pero, natatakot lang ako sa kanyang mabasag. Kaya hindi ko siya masyadong ginagamit. Okay siya kung halimbawang mabilis ang luto lang, let's say, ng mga paksiyo na sapsap o paksiyo na bangus, mga soup, ganyan. Nadedelikaduhan lang ako sa kanya pag gamit eh. Parang napaka-fragile niya. And yung heat niya kasi, even naman yung distribute niya, it's just that, pag uminit na siya dire-diretsyong ganyan, mahirap na siyang i-handle. And at the same time, madumudula siya. So, hindi naglalock in ng moisture itong ganitong klaseng pot, yung glass. Kung isa o dalawa lang naman kayo and you prefer using a glass pot, it's totally fine. Wala namang issue doon. Kasi ito, from stove top, pato din na lang na ganyan, tapos serve niya na. Kasi magandang presentation din naman siya. Wala namang problema sa mga ganyan. So, we've covered the basic pots and pans. Yung mga uunahin ninyong bilihin when start building up a kitchen is of course your almost everyday pan, 12-inch saute pan, your wok, your iron skillet, 
and your iron grill pan, your saucepan. <laughs> parang, parang ko na rin sinabi, bili nyo na lang lahat. <laughs> Paisa-isa lang, kung ano lang yung kaya ng budget. At some point, pag nabuo nyo na yan, then you can explore kung ano pa ba yung mga pwede nyo mabili. Now, let's talk about how to take care of your pots and pans. These are very important things to remember. You don't want to keep on buying pots and pans every single year. You don't have to. You just have to take care of them properly. You tell them, I love you. I care for you. Ganyan. <laughs> your pots and pans has different types of materials. Meron tayong titawag dyan na stainless steel or coated. These are the coated ones. Ito, yung coating niya na non-stick coating. Pag uh, hindi niya siya na handle properly, pag nag-scratch off na yung coating niya, then you cannot use it anymore. Malaki yung posibilidad na sasali na siya sa pagkain na niluluto ninyo. Masama na siya sa katawan. Using the wrong cleaning materials and doing the wrong cleaning method can really do some real serious damage. Don't use a scrubber. Yung metal na pang escoba. Kasi it'll scratch the surface. Bawa, nagluto ka yung tosino. Diba? Ang tosino, nagkakaramelize yung sugar niya. So, pag lumamig yung mantika, si tosino dumidikit sa pan. Lalo kung hindi non-stick. So, para tamatanggal siya on a warm water, maglagay lang kayo ng dishwashing liquid, and then yun yung ilalagay nyo sa pan. Hanggang si dishwasher na yung gagawa ng paraan na matanggal yung food na tumigas sa bottom ng pan ninyo. Never scrub it. But normally, dahil non-stick nga siya, dapat hindi dumikit ang tosino dyan. Pag dumikit, hindi siya non-stick. Naloko kayo na binilihan ninyo. Hello, Mr. Dye. Ito na lang po. Okay lang po ba kay detergent? I would suggest that you really use a dishwashing liquid or dishwashing agent. They have certain ingredients that will really help you clean your utensils or your cooking pots and pans ng mas mabilis at madidisinfect niya because it's antibacterial already. Never leave your coated pans over fire nang wala man lang mantika or wala kayong niluluto because this will break or destroy the film of the natural coating of your pots and pans. May tinatawag na triply. Ang triply, pag sinabi sa package na triply, ibig sabihin, triple yung layer niya. Your outermost layers are made of stainless steel and ang naka-sandwich dots is another metal which is usually aluminum. So there's also na tinatawag na multiply. Multiply naman, there are several layers doon sa mismong pan. It could be aluminum, it could be stainless, it could be ceramic, and it could be coated. So yun din, magandang pag-investan. Matagal ang buhay niya. So, it's important when buying a set of pots and pans, there's a manual included with it. You read it how to care for it. Kasi iba-iba ng materials yan. On cast iron skillets, hindi kayo pwedeng mag-use ng soups because the metal is porous. Meaning, it will absorb the flavor of the soap. That's why you don't have to use soap for your iron skillet. Pag hinugasan nyo siya, gagamit lang kayo ng scrubber just to take out the oil and the food residue. Pag natanggal nyo na siya, i-rinse nyo lang uli and then i-dry it off. And then before storing your iron skillet pans, you have to wipe it with a food grade oil. It could be canola, it could be grapeseed oil, it could be um, mineral oil. Basta food grade oil. I don't advise that you use olive oil because olive oil has a very distinct flavor plus mahal siya. It keeps your iron skillet from rusting or from having kalawang, you know. <laughs> Avoid soaking your pans or your pots in tap water. Tap water can cause rust because of the iron. Pag nasoak na kasi, yung pots and pans sa water, yung iron solution or yung iron content ng tap water can leave your pots and pans spots or marks. Remove marks by cleaning your pots and pans with a stainless steel cleaning product. Normally, you can just use it once a week just to finish or polish your stainless steel pans. Wag na wag nyo ilalagay ang pots and pans sa lababo at basain kapag mainit na mainit pa because it can break the natural coating of your pots and pans. Binuhusan nyo siya ng malamig na tubig, nang mainit na mainit pa siya, pinapatay nyo na yung lifespan ng inyong pots and pans. So it's very important when you use them at tinanggalan nyo na ng pagkain, lumamig na siya, that's the time that you wash your pots and pans. And don't stack your coated pots and pans on top of each other. Storing them in another way, like hanging them on hooks. Diba may mga kusina kayo nakikita na nakahangin mga pots and pans? Hindi lang naman yun pang decoration. Though dagdag 
ganda rin siya sa kusina. It's simply because it avoids scratching ng pots and pans to each other kapag nasa drawer sila. When you're going to store them sa drawer, what I advise that you invest in also, which is not expensive naman, itong mga pot and pan liner. So, nakikita nyo, para siyang star, hindi ba? Ngayon, nilagay nyo siya sa wok na huhulma na siya. Hulmado na siyang ganyan. Then, you can stock your saucepan. Then, it's protected. Hindi magsascratch off sa isa't isa yung saucepan at saka yung wok. Yay! I am so happy! We are done sa ating pangalawang lesson and I do hope you learned something and I'm so happy that all of you enjoyed our class for today. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for joining me today. It's really a pleasure to impart my knowledge to all of you. I'll see you again Saturday, Judian's Kitchen, 10.30 in the morning. That's on my YouTube channel and Sundays with Judai. Of course, every Sunday, 10.30 in the morning, live! Thank you guys! Stay safe, be kind, and always stay positive. Class dismissed.